Hey everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here, and we're going to continue our work on the Foundations of Reading um, Test Study Guide. And today we're, we're going to launch back into understanding how to apply reading comprehension skills and strategies to um, expository and informational text, uh, 0007. Specifically, you know, we've already gone through um, the history of reading, and we're going to continue our work on the knowledge of reading as a process to construct meaning and really talk about the theoretical perspectives that you're expected to know on the foundations of reading test. Things like close reading, you know, um, that is center to a lot of the reforms that occurred with the Common Core C standards. And what's that mean? Well, really it's this idea that you're only supposed to draw meaning from uh, the four corners of the text and like all me like you don't really interpret the author or think about you know the the experiences outside of that document like all of the meaning should just be contained within looking at the figurative connotative um, language that the author used um, there are, are of course hundreds of other theories to literary response you know you could look at Rosenblatt and transactional theory that looked at you know that there's also this efferent affective kind of um, influence when we're reading. Um, you know, then you can go as far as like Bakhtin or Kristeva, an intertextual revolution, or, or looking at Bakhtin and Carnival, um, or rhizomatic learning and, and just how the connections just sprout out all over the place. Uh, I would not do that on the Foundations of Reading test. Stick to what they are going to assess. And really, when you think about it, the Foundations of Reading test is built off of the um, uh, the big five from one of a really large national reading uh, panel study. And those are phonemic awareness, phonics, comprehension, fluency, um, and vocabulary. And people are like, oh, that's it. Science has settled it. We know, how, we know how reading research is done. If you actually go back and read into the footnotes and uh, minutes of the national reading panel, there'll be sections where they talk about, oh, we have to ignore all of the writing research on, um, all the research on writing and the connections to literacy because we do that's out of scope. Oh, we have to ignore all of the research on motivation um, because you know it'd be too big and we don't really know how to assess and teach that. The, even though that we know that these are critical elements to reading comprehension and meaning making. So when people say, oh, the, the, the science on, on reading is settled, no, it's a very narrow definition of who science. Um, and But you need to know the big five of phonemic awareness, pho uh, phonics, comprehension, fluency, and vocabulary, because that is how the foundations of reading test is organized. Um, and we will go through each one of those test objectives. You can actually map the test objectives to those big five. The most common uh, framework for reading comprehension right now is probably from um, Catherine Snow and the Reading for Understanding groups. And that uh, frames comprehension as like the intersection of the reader, the text, um, and the activity. And that is all so um, like situated in a larger historic sociocultural context. And reader differences can include, you know, skill level, back prior knowledge, um, cultural understandings, um, then you know text di text could be just text difficulty um and then the activity is like what are you asking them to do with the task that that impacts comprehension um in terms of what will they assess you on in the foundations of reading test you really need to know and have a good understanding of the common core state for standards and how those work so the common core state standards are really broken into 10 anchor standards and what they did is they said okay by the end of 12th grade, like if you're getting ready for college or career, this is, these are the, this is the knowledge and skills that you should have. This is where you should be anchored. Um, and then they worked kind of backwards to get all the way to kindergarten. Now, in those 10 standards, the 10th is um, based on text complexity. And we'll talk a little bit about that in terms of the foundations of reading. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a whole other kind of video. So really, it boils down to just three groups of standards, and that's um, a text is organized into key ideas and details, thinking about how uh, you interpret an author's use of, of craft and structure, and then how you interrogate knowledge and ideas from like multiple um, informational sources. And so those three groupings have you know, a set of anchor standards in each one of those. And then you can trace them all the way back down into 
um, kindergarten. And so we can take a look at that, and this is a very important task for you to do, is you really want to map out each one of those anchor standards um, and do the work of taking them and identifying what, what happens at each grade level, what changes. You know, what are the key levers between first grade and second grade on identifying key details? And what I'm going to do right now is go over a quick example with you and then leave you with a task to really parse out and unpack all of the anchor standards in the Common Core State Standards. This is a great tool to build up some background knowledge and prior knowledge that you'll need to answer essays on the Foundations of Reading Test and also will help you recognize different um, distractors so that you can eliminate one or two choices and get to a 50% chance of getting a question correct. So I love this assignment. Um, let's follow along the tutorial and make sure that you finish it on your own time. And then I'm gonna click on read the standards in English language arts literacy standards. Now, you, I want you to start at the anchored standards and they are, you know, you have college and career writing, anchor standards for reading, for writing, speaking, listening, and then um, you have them for anchor standards for uh, career readiness. And we're looking, then you have the grade level expectations. So let's go look at just these reading standards. This is what, these are the anchor standards. So this is what they believe students should have the ability to do when they graduate high school. So for example, just looking at this first one, read closely, determine what the text says explicitly and to make logical inferences from it, cite specific textual evidence when writing or speaking to support conclusions drawn from the text. So they said, okay, this is what we gotta be able to do at the end of 12th grade, let's walk it back till we get to kindergarten. And that's how those standards work. So what you're, what we are going to do is look at the reading informational text standards and you're going to choose one of these. See how there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't do 10 because it's a seven, but uh, choose one through nine. You pick one of them and we're going to trace those standards from kindergarten. So if I did an example. All right, so let's take this first one with prompting and support, ask and answer key questions about details. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that one first. So I go back to Teams. Oops, I have to unshare this screen and share all my whole screen. All right, let me share my screen here. All right, so in Teams, in the comprehension channel, there is a file called CSS for reading for information. And you can make a copy of this file. Actually, no, let's all work in the same one so we get them all done. And you can also work with other people. Please, you do not have to work alone. Please, if you're comfortable working with other people, do it together. Um, we need to hang out and see people. Um, and, and, you know, being taking a class online does not mean being alone. That's the last thing that um, I'm looking for. And if you need help finding a partner, reach out to me and I can be matchmaker. All right, so I'm looking at standard R1. And what I have to do then is paste it in um, with prompting and support, ask and answer questions about key details in a text. That means kids need to know what a question is. They have to know what the definition of a detail. Difference between key details and useless, I guess useless information, I don't know. But you know what I mean. Um, and then what skills, it says they need to ask questions, ask and answer questions with help. And then what kind of objectives could you write from the standards? Now, every standard could have like 10 objectives in it sometimes. Like just look at this one, with prompting and, uh, with prompting and support, ask and answer questions. So one of them could be like, um, after reading, you know, ask a question to a peer, um, answer a peer's question, um, identify a key detail in a story, you know. So 
you can meet this objective here, but not meet the grade level expectation of the entire standard. That's what they should be able to do at the end of kindergarten. So you have to be able to unpack these standards and pull out what students be able to know, what do they need to be able to do, and then convert that information into an objective. So the next step is to then go up a grade. Ask and answer questions about key details in a text. What's the difference that you notice? OK, it's really this one isn't what's added, but this is an example of what's taking away. No prompting and support. So you want to track those key differences. Um, bold out, put in bold new words or things get deleted, put them in parentheses because this is, these are the key levers. So and that's how you also differentiate in your literacy classroom. If I had have a student in first grade um, that is struggling to do that, I can then go back and add prompting and support. Um, it, you know, that's this we call them key levers and we use those terms in our rubrics to know whether students have met mastery or beyond mastery or need additional differentiated support. And one way to find that content differentiation, because remember, like that's really where you do most of your differentiation. We always focus in on um, accommodations, which are legally required differentiation, but every year student needs differentiation. And where, where you can do that best is in how you, the goals that you set for them based on those standards and objectives. So I really want you to go through this task and um, complete it first, but really understand how to pull apart standards and convert them into useful objectives. But more importantly, we're gonna have this shared document that will you know go through all of the standards you can copy it if you want to make your own or work on this one i don't care but i want us to build up a library of resources that we can help each other out um, and really understand how the common core gets scaffold from kindergarten up to 12th grade